Um, yeah. And after kind of seeing that pain, uh, I kind of made me realize, man, I do. This isn't this isn't what I want to live my life like. Like I don't want people to be constantly worrying about me. So uh, I knew that I couldn't make that change on my own. Where you want to go? Hey, yes, sir. hey, let's get it. I like your energy. I don't know. You tell me, please. All right, sub pin. All right, bet you had you had that in your head. That's what you always wanted to go. So I'm glad to go there. <laughs> you want to get dinner while we're there too? Watch a movie? What? Ah, dinner sounds pretty good. All right. Uh, it, not much for movies. Fall asleep, you know. Okay, fair. When I cook you your steak, do you get uh what? How do you have your steak? Always medium rare on the charcoal Weber, baby. I can say amen to that, brother. How's right. your day going? Hey, my day is awesome. How's yours? Beautiful. Right, let's go. Got to sleep in a little bit. Oh. Work today. So Rage, I'm actually a streamer. And one of the things when I stream, I go into games with randoms and I ask them a question that they maybe not expect to get asked while playing Warzone. And that question is, what do you think about God? They're not trying to force a conversation or anything like that on you, but genuinely just like interested in your thoughts. Man, why do you got to make things so awkward? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, no, I'm kidding, uh, bro. Uh, uh, funny story, man. I'm actually a youth pastor over in Washington. Actually? And, uh, yeah, for real, man. Hey, so, let's go. Me and Jesus, we get down. Big fan. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Hey, let's go, dude. Could I ask you for a little bit of your testimony? Ah, man, sure. So, uh, grew up uh, in a pretty broken home. Uh, uh, up until about eight or nine years old when my mom and dad came to Christ and uh, best way I could put it is kind of just living in a kind of a dark home and as soon as they found Christ man just joy was brought into my childhood um, got Hello. surrounded by people that loved us uh, helped support my mom and dad through some hard stuff uh, they ended up staying together they were on the verge of divorce but uh, the Lord redeemed the whole marriage is a beautiful thing and then uh, Growing up in the church, being a rebellious teenager, I ended up getting my girlfriend pregnant in high school. Hey. And uh, we got ourselves in a, obviously a tight situation, but uh, we decided, hey, you know what? This is gonna be impossible to do it on our own, but uh, with God, all things are possible. So Amen. We, uh, we gave our life to Christ and uh, we are now uh, about to celebrate 12 years of marriage. We got some beautiful kids, got number six on the way. So yeah, that's the shortened version. Wow, that's, well, thank you. That's crazy. <laughs> thank you for sharing that. I just want one of them to push me down him and I'll get the other one. That's one. And that's the two of them. So you uh, stream full time? Uh, m more or less. Yeah, uh, I, I not stream, but um, content creation. I use I use stream as a way to connect with my community and, and, and stuff like that. But uh, I love making content. I love making TikTok videos. I love making YouTube videos and uplifting people and, and put pointing people towards Jesus and his grace every single day. Uh, because, Amen. you know, I need it every single day. And if I were to just kind of hide that in on my own, like I want to make something that's glorifying and honor the Lord that would build someone up and people would go, hey, there's this guy named Jesus that is so much better than anything you could ever ask or imagine for. He died mm -hmm. on a cross, rises from the dead, gives you grace in life that you would never be able to get on your own. Like, well, you know, I think a lot of times as, as, as Christians, man, we like to, I mean, we're so heavy on the grace side, which obviously is a beautiful thing, but just because we have an abundance amount of grace doesn't mean we don't strive for excellence, right? Oh, for sure. So creating for sure. good content, right? For the glory of God is a beautiful thing. No, for sure. And like one thing I'm so passionate about, bro, is discipleship. My hope, right, is that I'd be able to equip people to live a life that's honoring and glorifying to God. Not just tell them about the grace. Yeah, that's awesome, right? Um, mm -hmm. But I understood the grace of God when I was 13, but it wasn't until I was 19 that, that I was equipped to live a life that was glorifying and honoring to him. So uh, you had a guy disciple you then, huh? Yeah, his name was David. Um, That's awesome. He, he taught me, like I knew what the gospel was in my head, but I didn't know what the gospel was in my heart. But yeah, the, the most important thing in my life has been discipleship that someone like loved me enough to, to teach me what it means to follow Jesus. And like, cause, mm -hmm. it, cause for like, I was a Christian, like when I was 13 to the 13 to 16 or 19 probably, but I didn't read my yeah. Bible a lot. Like I didn't take, I didn't take the 
development in my faith and growth seriously ever. Um, and it wasn't until someone loved me enough to, to teach me how to follow Jesus and grow in my faith. And, and now right. my hope is to be able to equip other people to grow in their faith and, and encourage other people. Like, so this is, this is my big, this is my big goal in life, right? So hear me out. My goal <laughs> is to disciple 12 people in life. I feel like that's my call in life. Hey, there you go. And not just disciple 12 people, but disciple 12 people who go and make disciples. And that they would go yeah. and make I mean, Jesus had the perfect model, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. He had his, his inner three for sure, but then he had the 12 that he poured into and those 12 multiplied out yeah. further and further, right? Until you had thousands of people. Exactly. And and I've done the math. And if you were, and, and if I were to disciple 12 people who go and make disciples of 12 people who go and make disciples of 12 people, within six generations, we're talking over 3,000, we're talking like 3 million people discipled. That's so wild. Isn't that crazy? So like people are like, wild. It, like they're like, oh, it's not that big of a, but like you're talking about like God changing the world through one broken person. You know what I mean? Like that, it's just a vision that I have. I love it, man. Yeah. More power to you. And you know what? Especially with uh, social media and like you said, content creation, you're able to get that message out there. Yeah. But, so I got to ask you a, a question then. Have you, uh, have you found one yet? Have I found one person I've discipled or discipling? Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. The first person I ever actually started to disciple was my best friend. Um, his name awesome. is Coleman, uh, or his name is Coleman. He, I'm actually gonna be li leaving where I'm at now to go move in with him uh, because I've, I actually play professional soccer. That was my job and I just recently retired. I want to go and live in community and he, and we want to get an apartment together. So I'm moving to Columbus, Ohio to, to live with him and um, be in community. I have a friend named Trevor uh, who one day during COVID texted me, hey Chris, how do I start reading my Bible? And I got to start discipling him. And then there's a couple people, those are like, you're talking about inner circle. Those are who I'd say is like my inner circle right now. And there's a couple For other sure. people that I'd say I'm starting to disciple or somewhat discipling, but not full on currently, mostly because it's over the internet. And um, wow. I'm trying to encourage people. My hope is to encourage people, hey, I can pour into you. I want to pour into you, right? As much as I can, but I want you to be a part of a local church, right? Because they can care for you, love for you, serve you so much more than I ever could. What's your favorite youth pastor story that you have or worth you, worst youth? <sighs> oh, I want to know that one. I see these TikToks the all the time of people go like, <laughs> my worst youth pastor story. And I'm like, oh, that's so funny. Praise God, I'm not a youth pastor, but I gotta know. Oh man. <gasps> this year we had a, we had a summer camp out, uh, just up in the woods, super hot hot week okay. and uh, we had a kid get heat exhaustion that oh no pretty rough so oh, I just, no. like, started asking questions like have you drinking any water today and they're like i no." it's like oh. <laughs> so that was a little rough you know uh, yeah. we don't have cell phone service we're up in the the boonies yeah um but honestly man i've been super blessed we have a, a pretty small little local church so i i got about anywhere between 15 and 20 students okay. uh, on a weekly basis that's but, awesome um, and they're 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 great kids, man. They really are. They have a heart for the Lord. Um, we've got great volunteers who are just passionate uh, for the Lord. So I think you know that that trickles down into the students' lives. So yeah, super blessed. I got uh, a cool success story right now. I've got a young man that when he first started coming to my youth program about three years ago, uh, I had had some meetings with my volunteers. Like, should this student not be allowed to come anymore? And that was that was tough to like even think that we wouldn't allow this individual into our program because. Yeah just of how misbehaved he was but he was such a distraction yep. uh, to the other students so we were just kind of loving on him and praying through it and i was uh getting together with them uh, pretty regularly and we're three years past kind of that date and he is one of our uh our main leaders actually in the youth program oh that's students. awesome he uh he used to joke all the time about pornography yeah in uh during youth group which is you know like running middle school high school yeah a little rough um and now he's uh he's actually uh overcoming that addiction that was in his life so oh, oh praise be to just god really cool success story man. oh that's awesome i i'll be honest one of the things that i, I i'm uh i used to be in young life i don't know if you know what young life is um yeah love it, used, young, it, it, it used to be a very massive part of my life i found myself getting really frustrated with that type of kid right and it's probably one of the reasons mm -hmm. like god I don't have that gift of, of being able to be graceful like that. You know what I mean? Like everyone has spiritual <laughs> gifts, but like it would just, it would, it would drive me crazy. Like, honestly, um, yeah, for sure. So like, I'm just, 
I'm thankful for people like you who do are able to share that grace and gentleness towards kids like that because it's not easy. I think being a youth pastor is probably one of the most frustrating, difficult j jobs in the church. And I'm just thankful for someone like you who's able to love kids that are hard to love. Yeah, for sure. And it's a, it's a matter of perspective, right? Because adults are hard to change, you know? So this but is true. Typically adults are pretty stuck in their way, so you don't see transformation in their lives as quickly. Where yeah. students, you're in a critical point in their life, right? Yeah. Between the ages of 13 and 18, and yeah. there's a lot that goes on, and the fact that you get to directly influence that, I think is, I mean, it's, it's really powerful and uh, absolutely. very rewarding, right? I, I, so. was, I was talking to a buddy of mine yesterday, and he thinks, see, I, I think there was a stat that he was talking about that it's something like 30 percent or like 30 or 15 percent of people who end up being are saved they profess their salvation uh after the age of 30. so like the very few amount of people that convert or or become saved are is so small after after the age of 30. and it's like yeah. wow it just it just makes it it makes it like people people see the youth pastor as like yeah, like the the man. pastor in training or like somehow lesser than you know what i mean and i just oh yeah that's 100%. just not that's just not the way it is you know what i mean well and you see a lot of times like the youth pastor job is like the stepping stone into a lead pastor job and yeah you know why can't it be a full-time call so soccer what's it what was that all about man um so for the longest time uh soccer was my idol right it was my god it was the thing i put my hope joy and life into um and it wasn't until i was about 19 when when i started to get discipled the reason i started to get disciples because i got injured and had to basically leave soccer and stuff like that and his name's david the guy who discipled me he, he asked me the question of why do you do these things like why do you do everything in your life right like ask yourself the question why do you do it in life yeah, why and he's like and i'm like and i'm like and he's like why do you play soccer and i'm like because it gives me joy happiness and and uh, you know i love the the way it makes me feel being a goalie and making a big save right he's like then you shouldn't be playing soccer and i'm like okay so over the next couple months the lord changed my heart of the reason i play soccer is not for me but rather to god's glory and the the way in which i think about that is building relationships with teammates so that I would maybe earn the right to share with them the good news of Jesus one day or plant a seed in their heart of, hey, there's this guy that loved you so much that died on the cross for you uh, so that you could have a relationship with God, not just a get out of jail free card, but a true genuine relationship mm -hmm. with God. Um, because I think so much these days we, we, pr we preach and teach about a get out of jail free card. Um, yep, but something, 100%. something I love is when Jesus teaches us how to pray, he says, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. that is in heaven. And it's like, all right, well, how is God doing this type of work? Well, for some reason, I don't understand it and I never will, but for some reason, God said, I'm going to use broken people in broken places to make my will be done or on earth as is in heaven. Right. Yes, yep, and, yep. and because of that, I'm like, that's, that's to me a greater gift than just salvation in itself of just like being, heaven, yeah. of, of just being saved from hell. Right. Like, like that is to me, that's 12 times more beautiful than anything that Yeah, I mean, if you could have heaven, but there was no God there, would you still want it? Exactly. Should be no, no, absolutely not. Like, I want to be where I want to be where the creator of the universe is because he is the ultimate good. I want to be where that thing is. You know, if heaven's the, if that heaven's where that is, awesome. I love it. The soccer was your idol. How many other things, right, in life do we have that are uh, oh fast? I mean, we still work through that every single day. There's I'm so thankful to the Lord, but mind blown that like he had to use something like a a, a pregnancy to to lead him to you. You know what I mean? Like I 100. Uh, oh, it makes me it makes me think well, of Romans 28 or 8:28 where it says. For those who love God, all things work together for good. And like he used that to work for good. You know what I mean? Like it's just... Yeah, you know, for sure. Uh, that moment in my life uh, was obviously hard, but it also kind of made me realize how what I um, what I do with my life matters and it impacts those around me. Right. Yeah. So when I when I saw how much hurt came from the decisions that I made, I, you know, just praying with God and just talking through it. It's just like, you know, Richard, you can use your life uh, to benefit others in a positive way or negative way. Um, yeah. And after kind of seeing that pain, uh, I kind of made me realize, man, I do, this isn't, this isn't what I want to live my life like. Like, I don't want people to be constantly worrying about me. So uh, I knew that I couldn't make that change on my own, right? Like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, yeah, it's only through Christ that I could 
could actually become the individual that I was, like, you know, God called me to be. Yeah. And uh, that's where really the most purpose and enjoy of my life would ever be experienced is by yeah. living 100% for him. And yeah, you know, it was, uh, man, again, a church that loved me, supported uh, my wife and I, uh, obviously our new son. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they didn't kick us out, you know, like some churches might have. Yeah. Not, not that that's, you know, necessarily a thing that's really common, but there's some, yeah, uh, some, some, you know, churches aren't perfect all the time. Yep. <laughs> But our church, sure. they, they loved us, you know, they embraced us, they gave us ma uh, marriage counseling, mm. uh, taught us what, what genuine selfless love looks like. Yeah. It's beautiful, man. And uh, like I said, now we're, uh, we are celebrating 12 years this year. And uh, awesome. man, we have a wonderful family. I'm finishing up my last year of, uh, of my Bible school. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just hoping to continue to serve the Lord with whatever capacity I have. I love that. So you've got yours that you're discipling. I gotta ask you a, a question here, uh -huh. uh, kind of ministry related. Why do you think people do it uh, right? Just well, maybe, maybe maybe you don't think, but uh, why do you think it's so hard for people to uh, step up and actually disciple others? Because it seems to be a need, right? That people need to be discipled. Yeah. Uh, but it seems like there's there's fewer and fewer people willing to do so. Yeah. Um, one, I think. Honestly, if I'm completely honest, I think men in the church are spiritually yep. weak. Um, I'm not saying everyone, every church, but no, I, don't know. I think there's a lot of a lot of men in a lot of churches that have created spiritually weak don't men um, and not able to don't know how to disciple um, or why they should disciple or what's the importance of it um, and are just content in themselves. Right. And their family and stuff like that. Um, one that and two and like in that not being people not being equipped um, I think so many people are like afraid of of not told how to live but taught how to follow Christ like we're not supposed to touch anyone's buttons or or offend anyone right and I think the church is right. I think I think men in the church can be scared of that for some reason why I don't understand it they just don't they just don't want to teach and i think it starts the reason why they wouldn't want to teach is because they don't really understand the grace given to them because nobody taught them i don't know i i just yeah. there's there's just a full-on lack of discipleship and i think it's a circle rather than, rather than a straight line you know what i mean you growing up in a church uh, mm -hmm. you didn't get discipled till you were a young adult but, yeah uh, how big how big of a church did you get to when you were kind of growing up uh i went to probably a church a couple hundred um mm -hmm. but my favorite type of church is the one i went to in college uh it, w it felt like a home church um it was a total of oh, okay. 40 people total and maybe like 20 of those were kids um That's so awesome. i loved it because it it really felt every single time like i i was learning and knowing everybody that i walked in not just like mm -hmm. not just like oh i'm going to church and like i walk in walk out but like Everyone knew me and my best friend who has a cycling as a soccer guy. It's like that we played for we played for Calvin. We we per, we were doing that. We were pursuing Jesus, right? They're always asking us how our days were, weeks were, when our next games were. Like they would show really up. Like it was intentional, bro. I had to see what it means to be a man of God there. I, I grew up in a similar sized church. It yeah. seemed like all the moms were the ones doing everything while the dads were sitting at home watching football. Yeah, um, similar, but I'll be honest, dude. Um, a lot of my walk as a kid didn't really, we never really talked about sin. We never talked about our need for Jesus all that much, um, mostly because mm. my dad um, had fallen short in multiple different areas um, as a father and as yeah. a husband. Um, and he he never really talked about it all that much so we'd go to church and we'd be that family that you know we'd look the part um life's all great and stuff That's my nice. mom is the biggest picture of jesus in my life um in the way oh, awesome. that she sacrificed for me and my my brothers and sisters and also sacrificed uh and forgave my dad um through a many 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 mistakes um man sounds a lot like my family <laughs> not because not because she had to but simply because she wanted to out of love for us hey well i really appreciate talking to you dude i'm gonna let the cat out of the bag i've known who you were the whole time no way dude <laughs> ain't no way yeah i follow you on uh, twitch on tiktok uh, oh and uh, i just want to say man i appreciate what you do and you were actually the one that uh encouraged me influenced me to start a uh, playstation chat party uh bible study 
You're awesome, man. Hey, all glory to God, dude. I'm just a broken person, but I appreciate that, hey, dude. I'm right there with you. Hey, love you, brother. Hey, right back at you. Dude, Have dude. a good one. You as well, dude.